Coming up on show 762, the new Chatamo 3.0 spec charges at crazy speeds. But how fast? Stick around, I'll tell you more. Plus, the upcoming BMW i4 has been caught juicing up at an EV charging station. GM delays the Hummer EV. And why Daimler's shift to electric cars is non-negotiable. Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. In fact, wherever you're listening in the world, welcome to EV News Daily. This is what happened on Tuesday, 28th of April. My name is Martin Lee. Go through every EV story so you don't have to. And playing catch-up this week as well. Thank you for your patience as I had to take a few days family time uh, with our new little fella. Uh, we were fortunate enough to become a family last uh, December and so just needed to pause the podcast for a couple of days to do some family things and now uh, catching up and just dropping a few shows into your feed at around the same time. Thank you for letting me do that. And thank you to MyEV.com for helping make the show as well. If you haven't checked it out yet in the USA, MyEV, which is a good name for a website as well, MyEV. EV is a marketplace specifically catering to the needs and wants and desires of the EV buyers and sellers of the world. But what do you want from your charge plug? Well, Chatamo Association uh, think that they have the answer. Operating under the Chatamo Communication Protocol, Chatamo 3.0 is the first publication of the next generation ultra high power charging standard. Now, for many people, Chatamo is something that they've only seen on a Nissan Leaf, maybe a Nissan ENV 200. Old school Soul had it, didn't it? And a few others as well. Oh, Mitsubishi Outlander. However, for many people, uh, they won't be too familiar with Chatamo. Uh, the new standard is being co-developed, though. And this is why I think Chatamo could well be the way that we all charge EVs, or at least for half the planet, in the future. Co-developed by China, the China Electricity Council and the Chatamo Association under the new working name Chaoji. The Chinese version operating under the GBT protocol will be released next year. Now, yep, so if you knew this, then the plugs on all EVs, even when Tesla make an EV and ship it to China, they will put the GBT plug on because uh, due to the way that China uh, runs itself as a country, uh, you can indeed say, we have this one plug. You will all use one plug. And everyone nods and says, yes. Uh, and so they use the GBT plug, of course. Uh, Chatamo is another one. Uh, CCS combo plug and Tesla have their proprietary connector as well. But the latest version of Chatamo enables DC fast charging at 500 kilowatts, over 500 kilowatts, a maximum current of 600 amps. It ensures the connector stays light and compact, and a compact cable as well, liquid-cooled cable technology, and as well as uh, the removal of the locking mechanism from the connector to the vehicle side, so it doesn't stay on the... Uh, the, the, the lock is no longer on the, uh, the plug, but onto the vehicle. Well, backward compatibility is something that many people talk about when they have new standards being released. And indeed, backward compatibility of Chatamo 3.0 is insured. In other words, Chatamo chargers today uh, will be able to feed power to current EVs as well as future EVs that are fit for Chatamo 3.0. Uh, started as a, a, bi a bilateral uh, project, Chaoji has developed into um, an, an international collaboration, really, uh, mobilizing expertise and market experience, they say, of the big players in Europe, Asia, uh, North America, as well. India will join the team and governments and companies from South Korea and Southeast Asia as well, expressing strong interest. Japan and China have been the ones to agree to work together on this, on the technical development and to promote Chatamo 3.0. So it's backward compatible with GBT. It's backward compatible with, obviously, all previous Chatamo connectors. And actually, there are some via an adapter, uh, some uh, talk about it being compatible with CCS. And so everyone seems a little bit obsessed with plug wars. I do kind of get it. It doesn't bother me, but I do kind of get why people uh, like to talk about these things and which one's going to win, in air quotes, as it were. But you know what? If China are going with this, and Chatamo is already massively in use, maybe not where you listen to the podcast, but it already is in many parts of the world, this could be the plug that everybody is using. Well, 
I would say, half the planet is using. Uh, it could well be that in the future, there are two plugs. There'll be Chatamo and there'll be CCS combo plugs. Now, I had thought for a period of time that maybe Chatamo was on its kind of on its way out, not on any cars these days, but by being backward compatible with China, so firstly, that's millions of cars and chargers, and also just the specs are just enormous, like 500 kilowatt charging, 600 amps. Uh, this definitely makes it a very, very compelling standard. Will it be on cars tomorrow? No, but China looking to roll out Chaoji next year, and it's something that we'll keep a very close eye on because, well, you know, charging that fast is a massive game changer for commercial vehicles, for working vehicles as well. So it makes you wonder where this plug could end up. We'll keep an eye on that story. And I'll pop a link to the chat on my website in the show notes if you want to find out more for yourself. There's an upcoming BMW i4. It's a stunning car. And it's been caught charging. In new spy photos, we now get to see a camouflaged version of the BMW i4. It's a test mule. It's up close and personal in these photos. And probably the best look that we've seen of this car. Most of what we can see from this design we have seen before says BMW blog, uh, the flush exterior door handles like the i4 concept, they still seem to be there. Uh, when the i4 finally debuts, they are talking about 300 miles of range, 500 horsepower, 0 to 60 in less than four seconds, and well, a price tag under $100,000. It could well be that for BMW fans, that ticks all of the right boxes. A charge flap for this on the right-hand side on the rear bumper, in other words, opposite to where Tesla put it. It's a stunning-looking saloon car, saloon sedan. Uh, it swoops down. It's going to just munch away at motorway miles do this very, very comfortably. If the latest SUV slash crossover thing craze isn't up your street, this is a very, very nice, low-slung, sporty-looking BMW with all-electric power. Moving on, General Motors is postponing the debut of the GMC Hummer, the high-performance uh, electric pickup bearing the Hummer name because of COVID-19, a spokesman said today, and according to autonews.com, GM were going to debut this on May the 20th at a GMC dealer meeting in Vegas, but that event has clearly been cancelled. A spokesman for uh, GM said they'll be looking at all options like a virtual event, and they will reschedule as the pandemic will affect all parts of the business. GM plans to build the Hummer at their Detroit assembly plant, being retooled, and that plant is being retooled to become GM's EV manufacturing hub. Construction has been put on hold uh, to comply with Michigan's stay-at-home orders, though. Go to Germany next, and Daimler, maker of Mercedes-Benz, say that whilst they only made a small profit in the first quarter of 2020 because of the company shutting down factories and shifting into cash preservation mode and cost management, according to AP News, the company's CEO said that they are engaging in a gradual restart of production and will continue their investments as planned in EVs. Uh, he called the shift to electric non negotiable despite the severe disruption of coronavirus and many people looking that looking at that for a reason to uh, to delay to postpone to save money to alter and cancel some plans in some cases and some of those are just rumors that i've heard that i'm just digging into before i bring them on the podcast uh, to you but there's certainly a big one in the u.s that looks like that collaboration between two big names could well be off but i'll look into that and bring it to you uh, later in the week on the podcast if it is indeed true but daimler saying it is non-negotiable we're moving to evs and we're sticking to the plan that is great news and the news that i know that you and i definitely want to hear things like that well, moving on, and the cash-strapped EV maker Neo has landed some agreements for a cash infusion of about a billion US dollars from investors, easing concerns about their continued operations, says the South China Morning Post.com. The deal comes after Neo's senior management raised concerns in a filing in March about their ability to stay operational over the next year if they didn't get new financing, posting losses of 1.6 billion US dollars last year in 2019. See, raising funds has become critical for Neo amid increased 
increased competition from people like Tesla. Uh, they've got their manufacturing base in Shanghai. And whilst everyone's had difficulties with COVID-19 in China, factories are open after communities were locked down and factories were halted all up and running again uh, now. And so Tesla up to about 3,000 Model 3s a week. And of course, every car produced uh, generates income. And so a company like Neo, if they are going to take on Tesla head to head, uh, they're certainly going to uh, want to start getting cars into production as soon as, or new cars, I should say, uh, new models uh, specifically into production. Okay, let's continue and talk about the final story this week. And the uh, the use of EVs in various bits of the world that we don't often talk about on this podcast. One of those is for the use by the Army. The US Army, uh, commercial-led advancements in EV technology, have actually meant that the Army have been looking over their shoulder at EVs and wondering whether it solves lots of their problems. Uh, the Army Futures and Concepts Centre are taking a hard look at EVs and working out how to integrate electric vehicles through their, the Army, the US Army's vehicle fleet, the programme director has said. There's a draft white paper proposal uh, focusing on the employment of EVs in the work, says uh, Lieutenant General Eric Wesley. Uh, during a press conference, the head of the Army Futures Command, General John Murray, is going to be amongst those reviewing this proposal uh, for an internal release this summer, and then they'll make some decisions. As the world migrates towards electrification, the US Army are saying there are several reasons why this particular initiative is important to the US Army. For starters... EVs can reduce costs. They can decrease costs. The number of parts required to maintain each vehicle. When a, a vehicle is in theatre and it is needing service, EVs are considerably cheaper and less complicated to repair in some cases. Moreover, the prices of internal combustion engine parts are increasing as the engine component supply chains lower their production over coming years and move to EV. Beyond vehicle maintenance, the Army also considers the logistical challenges and costs associated with, in theatre, things like supply routes, dependency on fossil fuels, getting in fossil fuels to fuel those vehicles that are being used uh, continues to be a challenge and it becomes more difficult to move fuel across battlefields. Electric and electrification could provide, although it's not a, you know, not waving a magic wand and fixing all of the army's problems in one go, it does provide an alternative approach and it will lessen the army's fuel dependency, he said. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on that story as well. Fascinating to see EVs heading into many more places that just, you know, I just wouldn't think of off, off the top of my head. But of course, use by the army in those combat situations uh, could be, especially if they're being deployed into places where they need to set up, uh, you know, very quickly, but can do so with some solar, some storage, maybe some generation as well to make that electricity. So if you ha are able to use something like small scale electricity generation, maybe through generators, uh, to make that and store it and then use those those EVs, then uh, having a you know a base for the fossil fuels, as it were. I can see how, well, I don't always want to promote fossil fuels on the podcast, you know, having one place where the electricity was generated and then being able to use those vehicles uh, certainly uh, makes you think, oh man, you know, EVs can be used in many different situations. Question of the week this week. On Sunday, reading out your answers to what car you have driven in your lifetime, either past or present, that you would love to convert to electric power. Email me anytime about any subject. My address is hello at evnewsdaily.com. Leave a comment on the YouTube show. Thank you to 233 patrons of the podcast. Your sheer generosity means that this show makes its way on the air. If you would like to have a look at what it's all about, Patreon is a place where you can support creators. P A T R E O N dot com slash EV News Daily. Any reviews welcomed via Apple Podcasts helps grow the show. Have a wonderful day. I'll catch you tomorrow. And remember, there's no such thing as a self charging hybrid. <laughs>